Today our instructor is none other than Christian Sadler. Got to spend a few minutes with him last night too. Uh, it is always good to be in his company. Here's a person that he, he's not the, the star of the show and the, the power of the room and everything. He sits back and he watches. He's not afraid to let other people take a few steps forward because he has prepared the way. He works so hard behind the scenes to make these events happen, to make them look flawless. And it, it takes a lot of coordination. It takes a lot of effort. Often it takes a lot of money. And here's the man that puts it all together. And I'm proud to introduce him this morning. Christian, how are you? I'm great, Ron. How are you? Doing great. Good, good. Hey, I want to say how much I appreciate what you do every single morning for us on these phone calls. And uh, just your presence. Every time you show up to an event, man, you make people smile. And I appreciate your warm energy and, and the value you, you, that you bring to this community. And I just see your leadership skills continue to rise. So um, thank you so much, Ron, for everything that you do. And folks, let's jump into our call. We have a limited amount of time. And I've got a lot of stuff that I want to cover with you. And a lot of it comes from... Um, just basically what's coming up in the market right now. People often come to me with uh, successes and challenges, and I want to assist you guys in seeing more successes and avoiding more challenges. So that's my goal in some of the things that we're going to cover today. So one of the things that falls on both sides is registering your guests. And I'm going to share my screen here in a minute so that I can kind of keep you guys on track here. But first thing I want to do is I just want to highlight registering your guests is simple and not registering your guests can hurt you. Okay. It's not just something that is a pain in the butt for registration. It's a pain in the butt for everybody, including you. And so I want to help you understand how crucial, how important registering your guests is. And one of the big challenges lately or the confusing parts of um, our flow here in Utah is that we have a lot of people that they, they do great at registering their folks for Thursday. Okay, and so somebody comes down on Thursday, they get to see the Four Pillars presentation with Mitch Nelson, and uh, you know, those people are excited, and they go to the back of the room, and they sign up to, uh, you know, for the following day, so that they can get their book, and so that they can get their velocity banking calculator. And here's where the breakdown happens. I believe that there might be a misunderstanding that if somebody goes to the back of the room and signs in on the iPads, that that means that they are registered in CAMS. That's not the case, folks. See, we can't get into your back office. We can't register people for you. We just don't have that ability um, currently. With our current system, there is no way for us to register those people for you for the following day for Friday. And so what happens is, we have a whole bunch of people showing up to Friday that haven't been registered by their IMA. So this is me asking you, this is me begging you, pleading with you to make sure if you register somebody for Thursday and they're coming to Friday, to make sure that you also register them for Friday. Just because in the system they're already tied to you, uh, that doesn't mean your job is done. And here's something that uh, I want to continue. I also want to highlight is our registration staff. See, our registration staff, and really everybody who helps us run events, are volunteers. Okay, these are people that are our peers. They are people that are also building a business just like you, and are taking extra time away from their own business, away from their own guests to be able to serve you and to be able to serve this community. And I know that many of the ladies that we have on registration are actually doing real estate transactions and in fact are making more money than many of the people um, that are here and showing up and not treating these um, ladies and some men 
right, with respect, right? You're treating them as if they are a low-level employee of some sort. You are demanding things from them and expecting them to fix your problems for you. And what I want to do is I want to, uh, I want to wake you up to the reality that these, these folks are not employees, right? These are powerhouses in their own right. And if you continue, and, and when I say you, it might not be you individually, but if you're observing this and not saying something about it, you are as big of part of the problem, right? Uh, complacency uh, is, is also a crime, so to speak, right? So if you see uh, the ladies being treated, if you see the men that are, that are, are on registration being treated like secretaries, I want you to stand up for them. Okay, I want you to um, I want you to edify them. I want you to uh, make sure that you are doing everything you can in your power to make their job easier because they are there to serve you completely as volunteers, right? Completely under their their own cognition, and if they continue to be treated. Um, uh, uh, in a way that, it, that they don't feel valued, they have no reason to continue to do that, right? So we can all do better, all of us. I take responsibility in the ways that I can do better as well. So we can all do better in making sure that these uh, ladies and men uh, that are on registration are treated and honored for the service that they give, because that's what it is, it is a service to us. So register your guests. Do it, do it, do it. Um, Judy actually had suggested to me that one great um, way for you to be proactive is just go in at the first of the week or the first of the month, whatever makes most sense to you, and at least get yourself registered for all the events that you already know that you're going to, right? Just go in there and register yourself for Thursday, register yourself for the Fridays that you're going to, register yourself for the Saturday events. Just get that out of the way early, okay? But remember, just because you do it for yourself doesn't mean that you're okay and that you shouldn't do it for your guest. So every time you register, or every time you schedule a guest, every time you are on the phone, and you're talking to somebody and you uh, confirm them that they're coming to a Thursday event, before you, uh, or I should say, as soon as you give them the address, the next thing you should be doing is opening up a new tab and registering them for that upcoming event. If we can all do better at this, guess what, folks? We're gonna have a better flow. It's gonna be easier for people to get in the doors. And guess what? With a better flow and with more ease, that means we have more attention to give to our guests. And when we have more attention to give to our guests, we close more business. And I know that every single one of you want to close more business. So help me with that. Assist me with that. And again, you may think that it's not you and you're doing great, but if you see other people doing it and you don't say something about it, this is something that, uh, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not as bad of a crime, but it's, it's there. It's up there, right? We want to make sure that we honor the people that serve us. This also has to do with our, um, uh, our usher staff and everybody else that we have that are serving out of the goodness of their own heart. Uh, you know, many of them powerhouses in their own right, uh, but, but are giving their extra time and effort and energy. And, and, I mean, you think about the registration staff, oftentimes they miss you know, majority of the events where they would love to be in there seeing and experiencing, they serve you by staying outside and making sure that your guests get checked in, right? Super Saturdays and, you know, all these different events, they, they oftentimes are sitting out in the hall and just doing their best to, uh, to watch where they can. So that's, uh, that's one aspect that I wanted to talk to you about today is registration, okay? And so let me share my screen here. The next thing, let's get over here. The next thing I want to share with you is where we are at in the month. All right. So I've got this little calendar here. This is actually a physical picture of a calendar that I have in my room that I fill out every single month. 
And then when I wake up every day, I look at this calendar as soon as I wake up. It's right there in my master bedroom closet, right through the, you know, the open door is this calendar, which shows me where I am at and keeps my mind focused on success, focused on hitting my numbers. And so if you look at the month, this is March, right? Uh, we have, we are right now on the first of the month. Okay. In order to get paid in March, your orders must be in by the 16th. So orders must be in by the 16th. So if you can see here, I've got little check marks up in the top corner of how many orders that I have in that will pay me. So I have two orders in right now that will pay me and we need to get those funded, right? So my focus is getting more orders in and funding the orders that are already in place, okay? And so therefore, on the 17th, right? The 17th, we're already into April. So any orders that are entered the 17th or later are gonna count for April, okay? They're, they're going to pay out in April. Now, if you get orders in by the 16th, we need to get them funded by the 29th. If they're not funded by the 29th, you're not going to get paid. And, and it has to be like early in the day on the 29th too, by the way, right? Because not only do the, does the money need to come in, but it needs to be registered by somebody physically at corporate. So as long as they get those funds and they're in by the 29th, then there's the possibility for you to get paid on the 30th, right? And the 30th is the last payday of the month. So I want you to think about that. And uh, I'm just going to leave this up here as I continue to talk. Let me see our chat window here. Please make sure to emphasize your guests to be on time as well. This would help us out. Thank you, Natalie. That definitely does help. So our event, when you're inviting somebody, make sure that you're telling them to be there 10 to 15 minutes early, right? Tell them that we're gonna start at seven o'clock, be there 15 minutes, you know, 10 to 15 minutes early. In fact, if you have guests that you know show up later than when things start, it might be a good idea to just say, we start at 6.45, right? Or we start at 8.45, and then that way uh, people will show up. I know that this, uh, you know, the, the <laughs> uh, Michael and them did a really good job with this, uh, it, taping that we did yesterday because they told everybody that it, it, uh, it started at 4.30. So I was there at 4 o'clock, <laughs> right? And uh, we weren't even starting taping yet. So it works, folks. Tell them that it starts earlier than it does, and then they'll definitely be there on time. So that's, uh, that's something to think about. So we've got our registration stuff out of the way. We got um, this thoughts of where you need to get your orders in out of the way. The other thing I would like to uh, focus on is this Saturday's event. See, I had an interesting, I had an interesting call yesterday of somebody who was, was asking questions about the Saturday event. And they were like, well, uh, I see that it's $50 on the calendar, but I also got this email from corporate that says that um, I'm going to have it streamed in my back office if I'm an IMA for free. So um, I just don't understand, you know, why they would do that because it, everybody's going to say, uh, I'm not going to pay the $50. I'll just stay home and watch it for free. And I just don't understand that thought process. And so I want to talk it out with you folks. And I think, I think that, the only understanding I can get from it is that people are still possibly in a W-2 mindset where instead of focusing on making $500, if they're just getting started, they're focused on saving $50. Don't be that person, right? If, if, you're, um, if you are in this to win it, if you're, if you're in this business to win, to succeed, why would you ever miss the opportunity to be 
live, in person, with somebody of the level of Mark Kohler? Why would you miss the opportunity to get guests there? And even if you're brand new, the very least that you would make if somebody signs up and, and decides to uh, enroll with us, is, with us is $500. If $50 is a lot to you right now, that's the reason that you should be there. If $50 is a lot to you right now, that's the reason you should be inviting everybody you know. This is the interesting uh, thing that I see, and, and I'm not immune from it. If I think back to when I first started, I, remembering, I, or I remember the, the crippling fear. Uh, I remember the procrastination that would show up when I was having my hardest time, when, I, you know, when $50 was a lot to me to show up to an event. I remember how sometimes, while I still had that W mindset, that would actually have me do less. And what I want to encourage you is if you would like success, if you want to now become an entrepreneur, have that same fear help you do more. If you find yourself in procrastination mode because spending the extra $50 is uh, difficult for you, then action is the quickest way out of procrastination. Call one person. And then when you've called that one person, call the next. And then when you've called the next, then just do one more. And by the time you do one more over and over and over again, pretty soon you're going to be in the flow and it's going to feel good and you're going to continue to call people and you're going to fill that event up. And if you get five people or 10 people in that room, guess what? You have a high likelihood that you're getting paid coming up in March. Because if you get them there now on the third, you have almost two full weeks to bring them the rest of the way through the process and get them funded, right? So that you can get paid in March. Get their order in so that you can get them funded within the next two weeks to get, to get paid in March. So it's time to step up your game. It's time to step up your thought process. If you're thinking, well, maybe I'll just save the $50 and stay home and watch it streaming on, at, at my house because it's going to be easier for me to invite somebody to my house than it will be to invite them down to corporate. Guess what? That's limited thinking. If you can't ask somebody for $50 and a commitment to drive to Centerville, I'm going to have to guess you're going to have a real hard time asking somebody for $20,000 and dedicate the rest of their life to learning. So I would like you to have the same level of uh, com comfort comfortability, comfortability, is that a word, <laughs> of asking somebody for $20,000 as you would for 50. And I would like you to have the same comfortability of asking somebody for $50 as you would to ask them to watch a video. And for some of you, even that's difficult. So I would like you to have the same comfortability as asking somebody to, um, to spend $20,000 as you would to ask somebody if they would like $5. Because if you can ask somebody if they'd like $5 and give them a $5 bill, if you can have that same sort of comfort because you know that asking them to spend $20,000 is gonna bring them way more value than that $5 ever could, that's when success shows up for you, right? When you, when you know that you're doing them a favor a bigger favor than it would be of giving them $5. You're doing them a favor when you invite them to enroll in this education and spend the, the rest of their life with a better mental framework. That's when you become successful. So it starts with inviting them to a presentation. It, it moves up the line when you can ask them to spend $50 on an event that can change their life and their future. And it moves up the line when you can have that same comfortability of when you ask somebody if you could give them $5 as when you can ask them to enroll for $20,000. Fair enough? Okay. 
Uh, next thing I wanted to cover, I told you guys I have a lot of different things and I'm jumping all over the place. So we are moving to a new topic. New topic. When you start working with other people within this community, when you start networking with others um, within the group, uh, there's some, some common practices that can keep you and them safe, okay? And uh, part of that is when you make a decision, so here's the thing. A lot of people know that uh, I have one of the most incredible business partnerships ever created in the history of man. And uh, uh, it's with Steve Myers. And Steve Myers is like the analytical brain behind the chaos that is me that just makes a lot of messes and you know, goes and creates a lot of, uh, of business. I go and create and he puts it all into uh, uh, a comprehensible, understandable business. <laughs> and uh, it's been amazing over the last you know, 10, 11, almost 12 years uh, to have somebody by my side that has strengths that complement my weaknesses. And I met Steve through the community, right? And here's the thing. We didn't just decide to start working together because it would save us some money. We didn't just decide to start working together um, because we happened to be in the same place at the same time, right? We actually, we worked separately on our own business for a long time before we really understood that it made sense for us to partner up and use our, our uh, forces together uh, in real estate and, and you know, everything really for that matter. Um, so what I would suggest is if you're going to create any type of partnership, the first thing you don't need to understand is uh, us as leaders are not here to mediate your business partnerships. So you've got to understand the risks going into any type of a partnership. And I'm talking about if you're going to partner with somebody uh, on a certain lead generation strategy, let's say you guys are going to go to a home show together and you're going to uh, split the cost of the booth and you're going to run that booth together. We're not here to mediate how you run that. So the most simple way of doing it is that you get your leads, they get their leads. You call each of your leads separately. You make sales. It's easy. It's smooth. It's done, right? Same thing, if you're gonna go put out roadside signs together, you get your number, they get their number, you put out your signs, they put out their signs, even if you might be running their signs and they're driving you around and, and you're just put, both putting out signs together, whatever it is, just separate it. Make it simple, separate it from the beginning, and then there's no confusion on down the line of whose leads is whose and who's supposed to run roll with who and what commissions are supposed to go where, right? The other thing you're gonna to wanna to do is before you partner with anybody, you want to talk to their five star, okay? This is just a simple practice that can keep you um, in good standing because you don't know necessarily what uh, the situation is of that person and you don't know what, they, what agreements they have with their five star and oftentimes five stars are giving extra, you know, resources and materials and things to their um, IMAs that are going through this process and, and uh, you don't ever want to be looked at as somebody who took advantage of another person within this group. And the easiest way to do that is just to simply have a conversation with their five star, right? Go up the line, talk to their five star before you decide to partner with them because this can also help protect you. Their five star usually has a better understanding of where they're at than, uh, than you might. And so they might be able to warn you if this person is, you know, not in the best position to, you know, take these things on or, you know, might not, uh, you know, hold up their side of the bargain because they haven't so far in another, another, another realm or whatever that is. Just talk to five stars. This also goes for the real estate side of the business. And this is really key. When you decide you're going to start working with somebody on the real estate side of the business, I want you to uh, I want to really encourage you. I wanted to uh, almost demand from you if I had the, if I had that type of power to talk to their five star before you do it. And there's a couple of reasons why you're going to want to do this. First of all, to protect you, because again, their five star has a better understanding of where they're at and uh, you know what they've got going on. Second thing is to protect that person so that you never find yourself. Um, 
you know, uh, in a situation where maybe you haven't shown up on your side or, you know, you have uh, exploited the resources of uh, another IMA that was brought in by somebody else. Remember, we are a community, but those are not your guests, right? Those are somebody else's guests. And the other thing is um, to protect that five star, right? If you go to them in the beginning and you can let them know, hey, we're planning on doing this deal together or hey, you know, I'm going to bring my money to the table for this, this transaction. You protect that five star in a way that they know what's going on with their team and they can advise you against it. If they don't feel comfortable with that person uh, jumping into a transaction with you, they can advise you against it. And sometimes, um, you know, we, we don't know where that other person is at in the process. And so therefore, uh, we may think it's a good idea when it's really not. And so this is probably one of the best ways I can suggest for you to be safe about your um, choice in partnerships is talk to the person that enrolled them before you decide to do anything. I do this mostly for the reason as I don't want to be looked at as taking advantage of this community. I don't want to be looked at as poaching this community for my own gain. I want to win and I want to win together, right? Uh, but I never want somebody else to look at me as somebody that is, you know, using my position to take advantage of somebody else in this community. And the reality is there is risk in real estate. There is risk in business. There's risk in life. There's risk in walking out your front door, right? There's risk in sleeping in your house. I mean, there's a couple in Southern Utah that had a boulder land on their house, right? There's risk in everything. And risk grows as you step into different situations. So if you're going to take these on, understand that there is risk. And us as leaders are not here to mediate your business partnerships. In fact, more importantly, Renatus, Renatus Corporate is not there to mediate your business partnerships. So um, there's been some situations where it's been brought to me and I'm always going to do my best to chime in and help. And of course, you know, when I say that we're not here to mediate, what I'm saying is be proactive so that it doesn't have to be brought up the line to, um, to, to leadership. Because quite frankly, if you come to the five star in the beginning, then they can give you the warnings and they can, you know, talk to you guys about the risks and they can put a second set of eyes on your transactions, right, before you jump into them and they can give you the warnings so that when and if things go wrong, uh, you already knew that that was a potential and you're already thinking about how to handle it and you're not coming and surprising uh, somebody else with the challenges that you're running into, right? I want to protect you guys. I want to keep you guys safe. And there's a whole lot of experienced investors in here, usually that are connected to whoever uh, it is that you're working with that can put a second set of eyes on what you're seeing, that can advise you on how to better evaluate, um, you know, the risks involved with uh, with a particular transaction. And we just we just want to do our best to to do that. So the the again, the biggest piece of advice, because here's the thing is, you may think because somebody shows up and because somebody, you know, seems like a powerful force and they talk about how they've done deals before, you might feel like they have all of this success and that they are, you know, um, uh, they are combo holders and they have all the education and they understand the education when in fact they might, they might not even own their education. They might just be an essentials holder. Um, and so, if you talk to their five star, you can get a good idea of what education they really have, what success they really have, what they've really done. So that's the biggest piece of advice um, that I can give to you guys is, you know, talk to their, talk to somebody's five star, talk to, the, to somebody that is, you know, upline from them, somebody that is there that can kind of help you understand whether, you know, whether they're somebody that you should be working with. And more importantly, what risks? We're never going to tell you, hey, don't work with that person, right? We want to encourage you for everybody. But we are going to say, hey, think about this and think about that. And remember that they're, you know, uh, in this situation. And I just, I just want to protect you guys. That's, that's the biggest thing I'm getting out of this. So the last thing that I'm going to cover, because I'm a little bit over time, and I do need to jump over to this other call uh, with the pit team. Um, but the last thing I want to do is 
I want to make sure that we understand that we are a self-policing community, right? We do as best as leaders to try and keep people going to the right spots and in the right rooms and, and all of those things. And I want you to understand that we are all at risk if somebody is in a room that they are not uh, supposed to be in yet, if that makes sense, right? So we are at risk. In fact, if we have somebody show up as a guest and somehow accidentally they end up in the room with Michael Huggins learning about the comp plan, if they were told on the phone and in their ad, hey, come learn about real estate, and then they show up and accidentally end up in the room with Michael Huggins learning about comp plan, they could potentially file a complaint that could shut us down. Like literally there's been companies that have been shut down because of misrepresentation. Okay, I'm not saying this stuff to scare you, I'm saying this so that we can all work together. If somebody shows up as a guest and they end up in the study group, we're all at liability because they haven't paid their dues. They haven't signed the, you know, the, the paperwork that says you know, that they are releasing liability um, you know, to be in that room and to be learning. And if they look at uh, Garrett or Nate as a, an instructor when in fact they are simply students helping to facilitate a study group, then that can come back in, in lots of bad ways. So if you see anybody who's a guest in our study groups, please say something about it, do something about it. If you see somebody who is only an essentials holder showing up into the AIT action group, please say something about it, do something about it, help us police. If you see somebody who's a brand new guest who thinks they're coming down to learn about real estate, showing up and uh, ending up in the comp plan room, say something, do something. If we all can kind of keep people going to the right spot and moving through the right flow, then um, we're all gonna win. And we're gonna be able to keep this thing going and keep this thing growing and success is inevitable for all of you. But if we don't do it right, if we're haphazard, if we're complacent when we see things that shouldn't be happening, that's a crime in and of itself, so to speak, a crime against this community, right? And so if we can all police together and work together to just keep things moving on the right track, guess what? We'll keep going, we'll keep growing, and we will continue to be successful. So I covered a lot today. I hope you guys all covered it, and uh, I gotta jump onto another call. Thank you so much for joining us. Make it a successful week, make it a successful month, Use this Saturday to propel your business forward. Make yourself a calendar like this and know 16th, your order's got to be in. And by the 29th, they got to be funded. Thanks for joining us, folks.